Hello, dear students. So once again, welcome back to Bridge Physics classes. So here, yesterday we have solved some questions from the particular chapter. So the number of MSQs we have taken. So on the basis of that, if you worked, it's very very good to you or in CET exam mode we are going to conduct. Questions from the chapter wise. Okay. So here the first question, the all three chapters, what we have taken, those chapters, from those chapters, I'm taking the combinedly today. Okay. And today is the most, I think, last class to you people. Right? Get prepared for your uh, CET exam and go through the, all the videos. You'll get the, some quick uh, methods and recall it. That will be very good for your exam. Okay. So let us come here. I'd like to take the classes. So what we are having the MCQ class today. Let's take the first class, first question. There are eight equal resistance R. In the question, there are eight equal resistances R. Two are connected in parallel. Two are connected in parallel. Two are connected in parallel. Such four groups are connected in series. Such four groups connected in series. The total resistance of the system will be total resistance of the system will be simple. The question is, the question is, two all eight resistors we are having, all eight resistors we are having, those all having a resistance R. Is all resistors having a resistance R, and this resistance R. They both are connected in parallel. They both are connected in parallel. Like this, there are four combinations which are connected in series. Is a question. Okay. So here, the effective resistance they are asking. The effective resistance. The effective resistance is. The effective resistance they are asking. So let us take here. Effective resistance. So here, first combination of two resistors connected in parallel combination first. And then next two are connected in the same way, but they are both connected in parallel and series with the previous one. And next, again two resistors, parallel combination is connected in series and next Another two resistance are connected in parallel. The combination will be series. So this, this is a V. This is R, R. So all the resistance are having the identical, identical resistance. So remember, if two resistance are connected in, connected in parallel, parallel, then we, parallel combination formula we are having. So can I take here RP is equal to R1, R2 divided by R1, R2 divided by, so what we are having, quickly, R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So what we will get here? So here we will get R into R divided by R plus R is 2R. So that equal to RR get cancelled, we will get R by 2. This effective is R by 2. This effective is R by 2 and this effective is R by 2 and this effective is R by 2. Now remember here, two identical resistors are connected in parallel. The effective, effective will be half of it. Effective will be half of the individual resistance. So now they are connected in what combination? Series combination. So each resistance now what it becomes? Half. Half bit 1 by 2, 1 by 2, that is uh, into we are doing R. That is R by 2, R by 2, R by 2. R by 2, series combination formula. Rs is equal to what we are having? R1 plus, R2 plus, R3 plus and so on. So here four combinations we are having. Four. Half plus, half plus, half plus, half. Then it becomes what? 2R. 2R is the effective resistance. For a given question, so this is a 
right answer. This is what we are having. Second option is the right answer. Okay. The next question. The next question is three resistances of one ohm each are connected in parallel. Are connected in parallel. So here. Three resistors are connected in parallel, each of one ohm. Such connections is again connected in uh, with series with certain resistances there. Here I'll write here 2 by 3 ohm, 2 by 3, 2 by 3 ohm resistor in series. The resultant res resistance will be effective resistance again they are asking here. So it's very easy. The same. What we have taken the previous question again parallel and series combination we are having parallel and series combinedly. So let us see here. See here. Okay, share it up. So now here, three one ohm resistors are connected in parallel. Take it parallel combination. So three resistors of equal resistance. What is one ohm? One ohm, one ohm are connected in what? Parallel. The another resistor, two by three ohm, which is connected in series with this combination. This is a given. This is a given. So now what is the effective of these three? If I take these three, the 1 by RP is equal to what we are having. 1 by 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 by 1. So that equal to 3 by 1, right? Then RP is equal to what you will get, Bida? 1 by 3 ohm. Yes or no? So the effective of combination of this parallel combination becomes 1 by 3. 1 by 3 ohm is connected in series with the 2 by 3. If I take now series combination, that equal to 1 by 3 plus 2 by 3, that will be equal to what? 1 ohm. The effective, effective resistance is becomes what? 1 ohm. So here the answer, 1 ohm. 1 ohm, 5 by 3 ohm, 2 by 3 ohm, and 3 by 2 ohm. Options they have given. Okay. So this is a, 1 ohm is the right answer. This is what we are having, third option. Okay. The next question. So here the question, the students. The lowest resistance which can be obtained by connecting 10 resistors of each of 1 tenth ohm. So least when you used to get? Least. So as we know when the number of resistors are connected in series, uh, series the effective resistance will be larger than the largest resistance connected in series. Are you getting? For example, if you have connected in series combination 2 ohm, 6 ohm, 8 ohm. 3 we have connected series. Then effective what will get? Bina? Effective will get 2 plus 6 plus 8. Then that will be equal to what? 16 ohm. Yes or no? But largest resistance connected in series what we are having? 8 ohm. But effective how much we are having? Bina? Effective is 16 ohm. That, that means what? The effective which is connected in series. The effective resistance is larger than the largest resistance connected in a series. Okay. So we will get least least if these three only if I take in parallel the effective 1 by RP is equal to what you get 1 by 2 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 8 are you getting if we are getting or not yes see here so if I take 12 here it will be 24 if I take here 4 it will be 24 and I will take if I LCM here it will be 24 that it will be equal to what 12 plus 4 4 plus 3, 16 plus 19, 19 divided by 24, then RP is equal to what, RP is equal to 24 divided by 19, 24 divided by 19, 24 divided by 19, of course, it will be less than the least resistance connected in parallel, if parallel I take, if the parallel they have, we have taken, the effective parallel combination which gives the least value, then here, here, what combination we should take? Least, when we are lowest, when we are going to observe, keep in your mind that it should be in parallel combination. So, here the answer they have given 1 by 2, 250 ohm, 
वन बाय हंड्रेड ओम एन वन अपॉन टू हंड्रेड ओम एन वन अपॉन टेन ओम द ऑप्शन वे आर लेट एस सी हेर द पैरल कॉम्बिनेशन आर टेक वाई वी आर टेकिंग पैरल कॉम्बिनेशन एज वी नो दट इज लीस्ट वील गेट सो हियर वन बाय आर पी इज इक्वल टू हाउ मेनी आर देर टेन आर देर राइट सो आई टेक हियर वन बाय आर बाय टेन आर वी डोट नो दट इज वॉट दे हैव वन वन टेंथ ओम वन टेंथ ओम so if i take if i take 1 tenth only if i take 1 tenth write down 1 tenth only 1 divided by 1 by 10 similarly 1 divided by 1 by 10 so 10 to the numerator it will be 1 by rp is equal to beta 10 so how many times we are having 10 10 times divided by what 1 10 into 10 how much 100 divided by 1 then rp is equal to what rp is equal to 1 upon 100 ohm So what is the answer we are having? That lowest is C. That what we are having one upon hundred, one by hundred ohm will get the answer. The next question is: Three resistors each of two ohm are connected together in a triangle shape. The resistance between the any two vertices will be resistance between the two any two vertices will be. So here three identical resistors are there. These resistors are connected in such a way that that is what a triangle strip so here i'll take a triangle here i'll take a triangle so this is what we are having a triangle okay so a b c any two vertices you can take any two vertices if i take these two vertices b and c between b and c what is the effective resistance see here beta very simple so in this such cases you try to try to try to check whether how many are connected in series and parallel remember so now here if current is flowing this if i take current here current is i as the current enters here at this point is going to be divided so i1 and i2 yes or no current is divides then this parallel combination but you have to observe here current is dividing what about at this point what current is flowing through this two ohm the same current will be flown that means these two are connected in simple if the current is same in both the resistances then the series connected then series connected then what is the effective of these two 2 plus 2 4 so take it i'll take now the two resistors which are connected so this is what we are having b terminal and this is what we are having c terminal so this now becomes 4 ohm And this, as it is, I'll keep two ohm. So now four and two are in which combination? The potential difference between the four ohm and two ohm are remain same. If potential difference is same, then there is parallel combination. Take parallel combination. One by R P is equal to what we are having. That is one by four plus one by two. That you can get three by four. Then is R P is equal to four upon three. Reciprocal of that, you can take one by R P is. so what is the answer what is the answer yes of course that is a 4 by 3 ohm is the answer hope you are getting okay so let us see the next question a next question is the diagram they have given it is is it visible is diagram is visible you have to observe here this is the diagram so here the question let take the question the effective resistance between between the point a and b so point a point a and b here the point a point b so here point a point b point c point d this is 3 ohm this is 3 ohm this is 6 ohm and this is 3 ohm and this one is also 3 ohm so here options are 2 ohm 3 ohm And four ohm. This is the options. Okay, let's see. So where they are asking here? Take here. This is, at this point they are asking, right? This is the point where the put effective resistance we want to take. Okay. So now here, just observe these two how they are connected. So what the current is flowing here? The same current will be flow here. That means these are connected in. Observe the diagram very neatly. These two are connected in. These two are connected in. Series, series. Three plus three will be six, six. Okay, six, six ohm. 
Now this six ohm will be connected in what parallel with six. If two six six ohm they are connected in parallel. So here first we have taken RS. How much would be three plus three? It becomes six ohm. Now six and six are in parallel. Take RP is equal to six into six divided by six plus six twelve. That will be equal to one by two. That will get three three ohm three ohm. So three. 3 and 3 will be in again series 3 and 3 will be in series then what will get here again 6 ohm now the effective what will get here here this is the terminal a this resistance what we are having that between b and now here we got the effective upper part we how much we are get 6 ohm and this is 3 ohm we are having so now here we have to calculate try to take eliminating elimination method of this uh, whenever they used to give a circuit diagram so go through just uh, branch by branch in which branch the current is remain same take that combination and resolve it with the another okay so now here 6 and 3 are in 6 and 3 are in parallel then rp is equal to what would a 6 into 2 divided by 6 plus 2 sorry 6 into 3 divided by 6 plus 3 That equal to eighteen divided by nine. Nine one za nine two za. Two ohm is the effective. Two ohm is the effective resistance per given combination. That is the second option is the right. Are you getting? Okay. The next question. So here, if R one and R two are the respectively the filament of resistance of two hundred watt bulb and hundred watt bulb. Designed to operate on the same voltage. Designed to operate on same voltage. Let us take here R1 and R2. They are asking here in this question the resistances of two appliances they have given, which is kept for a same potential difference working. Then R1 is the two times option they have given. R1 is two times of R2 or R2 is two times of R1. So let us take the uh, relation between R1 and R2. So as we know, power of any device. Is given by V square upon R. Yes or no? So this is what we are having. The power rated value, rated value of any device is there. Try to take the power is equal to V square by R. So they used to give rated value of voltage on which it works for a particular potential difference. It works. And what is the power of that? What is the power of that device? So on that time we can easily find out the what is the resistance. Okay. So let us take here. First, I'll take R1. So R1 is equal to what? V square divided by R. Remember, rated values you have to take. Rated value you have to take. So here V square upon P. So V V square V we don't know V square as it is keep divided by how much we are having? First, 200 watt. 200 watt. R1 is R1 is V square by 200. Similarly, I can I write here R two is equal to V square divided by hundred. So because the second bulb, second device bulb they didn't mention filament. Okay, bulb only filaments they have given. Then filament the second filament has a hundred watt. So V square by hundred because potential same same voltage same voltage operates on same voltage rated values. So if I take here R one upon R two, so what will get me here? V square by two hundred into hundred divided by V square. So V square V square get cancel. One by two R one by R two. So R two is equal to two times of R one. So this is a question. R two is equal to R two is equal to R two is equal to two times of R one. Yes, as we know, larger the Rated power, rated value, larger the rated power value, then smaller will be the resistance. So the same here, two hundred and hundred is there. Then of course R two is two times of R one. We can take the second option is the correct answer. Okay, let's see the next question, brother. So here two electric bulbs whose resistances are in the ratio of one is to two are connected in parallel to a Constant voltage source. The power powers dissipated in them have the ratio power dissipation. They have given here. Let's say combination two bulbs we are having, brother. Two bulbs. 
विच आर कनेक्टेड विच आर कनेक्टेड इन पैरल विच आर कनेक्टेड इन पैरल सो विच दे आर कनेक्टेड इन पैरल हियर so here resistance ratio they have given this if i consider r1 this is r2 then r1 upon r2 is equal to first bulb second bulb ratio 1 upon 2 1 is to 2 they have given power dissipation they have asking so here power dissipation is equal to applied potential difference square divided by resistance resistance if you want to calculate take the rated potential difference rated value of potential difference now if you are taking the power dissipation the applied uh, what we have given the source that is what uh, v square so you have to p1 r1 similarly if i take p2 is equal to v square by r2 then p1 upon p2 if i write that will get here p1 v square divided by r1 into R two divided by v square. So v square v square get cancelled. What will get me? R two upon R one. So here R one by R two is one upon two. So R two by R one is what? Two upon one. So two is to one. So here the answer is what we are having. Two is to one. Two is to one because the resistance is mostly proportional to power when they are connected in parallel. Okay. The next question. Here, an electric bulb is rated 220 volt and 100 watt. Power consumed by it when operated on 100 and 10 volt. Just I said, the power, the resistance they have now not given. First, calculate the resistance. Resistance when we are getting calculating, take rated values. Rated values are so V is equal to what we are having 220 volt. Power how much they have given 100 watt. Then we can calculate resistance. V square upon P. V square 220 into 220 divided by 100. 0 0 get cancel. 22. 22 into 22 484 ohm. This is the resistance, beta. Resistance of given bulb, electric bulb we are having 484 ohm. So once you got the, once you got the resistance, then easily you can calculate power consumed. Power consumed. So here, power consumed. Write down. Power consumed is equal to P is equal to V square by R, which we have to take now. At this case, what we have taken operated. How much we are having? One hundred and ten. One hundred and ten divided by four eighty four. Okay. So here, just calculate that. Yes, here, hundred and ten into hundred and ten divided by four eighty four. Four eighty four. So how much you got here? Twenty five. So once again. Yes, twenty-five watt. Just take it. Okay. The next question is, let's take a twenty-five watt, two two twenty volt bulb and hundred watt two twenty volt bulb are connected in series across a two twenty volt line. Which electric bulb will glow more brightly? More brightly. Okay. So you have to observe. Both are here. You have to observe. This is a twenty-five watt, and this one is what hundred watt. Two bulbs which we are having, if they are connected in series, two bulbs if they are connected in series. See here, this resistance how much we are having? That is R is equal to two. 20 into 220 divided by 
and uh, this second one we are having resistance r2 is equal to beta that is 220 into 220 divided by what we are having 100 watt are you getting so which one is having higher resistance the first one is having higher resistance right but they are connected in what they are connected in what series if they are connected in series as we know how much potential difference we have connected now here to a potential difference of what 220 volt 220 volt so here when the current is flows current will remain same in this combination current will remain same current is remain same the potential difference across first one v is equal to r1 into i and here v2 is equal to what we are having r2 into i are you getting so now here if these are connected in parallel, we can say different. But they are connected in series, then you take both are having the same brightness because the potential difference varies. V1 and V2 different. It will be gives a same. Next, four bulbs marked 40 watt and 250 volt are connected in series with 250 volt main. The total power is, total power is. So like, Take here marked value. So resistance four resist four we are having R is equal to write down that is a 250 into 250 divided by 40. Okay. So R is equal to how much you'll get here? Calculate it. Just Just calculate or you will get check it 250 into 250 250 into 250 divided upon 4 this is the resistance this resistance much resistance we are having right v square upon p v square upon p so these are connected in series the four bulbs are identical then resistance of each bulb will be same then rs will be equal to what rs will be equal to what four times of r four times of r Four times of R. This will be resistance. Okay. So now you have to take. They are connected in series. Total power consumed. Total power consumed. So power consumed. One by is equal to current is remain same. Current is remain same. That write down power consumed directly you can take power consumed. Okay. Solve it. Solve it as possible. The answer will say the similar questions we are having. Yes, can I take directly options? Are doing? Yes, you'll get the answer is 160 ohm. Six, 160. Yes, 160 watt. Yes. Shall I take next question? Similar questions? Okay. In a current carrying a long solenoid, the field produced does not depend upon. The field produced does not depend upon. So here you have to. A current carrying solenoid, as we know that. The next question. Here. A current carrying solenoid we are having. This current carrying solenoid, this is a solenoid, a long current carrying solenoid. The field produced due to it does not depend on. So the magnetic field produced due to this will be directly proportional to current, will be directly proportional to number of turns. Yes or no? Here, the number of turns per unit length. Yes, it depends on number of turns per unit length. It is directly proportional to what? Current. Yes, the current flowing through it, it depends. Then you have to observe radius of solenoid. Radius of solenoid on radius, on radius, it does not depend. On radius, it does not depend. That is the third option. Okay, let's take the next question. One Tesla is equal to one Tesla. So Tesla is a unit of magnetic field. So here the options they have given 10 raised to 7 Gauss. 10 raised to minus 4 Gauss, 10 raised to plus 4 Gauss, 10 raised to minus 8 Gauss. So, I have explained you during the magnetic effect of current, the when unit of Tesla, unit of Tesla is a magnetic field intensity uh, unit. So, 1 Tesla is equal to, 1 Tesla is equal to, 1 Tesla is equal to 10 raised to 4 Gauss, 10 raised to 4 Gauss. That is the third option is correct. This third option is 
correct so let's see the next question so next question is what we are having here when the current flowing in a circular coil is doubled doubled the current is doubled the number of turns of the coil in it is halved the magnetic field at the center of will uh, at the center at its center will become so here the question if the circular coil is there this number of turns are there if none of us then the current is flowing in this direction if i assume the current is in this direction the magnetic field will be of the magnetic field will be in this direction beta this is the current direction if this is current direction the magnetic field will be upward at the center that is the direction of a magnetic field by, by using curling fingers that you can take okay so that is right hand thumb rule so from here you have to observe beta so magnetic field is directly proportional to current and magnetic field even directly proportional to what number of turns number of turns so here magnetic field directly proportional to i n can i write so here b2 is equal to directly proportional right i current is doubled current is doubled but number of turns are halved half they have given here number of turns of i n only so b1 how much we are having i n then the magnetic field is remains the magnetic field does not change okay if you number of turns halved the current is doubled then that does not give any effect because the two two get cancels so you'll get so here as we know current number of turns and uh, current the magnetic field is directly proportional to num current as well as the number of turns in the coil so let's see the next question here the field due to a long straight wire carrying a current i is proportional to field the magnetic field which is proportional to current how it is directly proportional to current or directly proportional to square of or inversely proportional to current or a cube no so we know that is uh, directly proportional to what current as current increases magnetic field increases it is not a square or cube or it is not inversely proportional okay so this is what we are having the a option is correct the next question the direction of magnetic field magnetic lines of force produced by a passing a uh, direct current in a conductor is given by so as we know that is direction of magnetic field we used to take from the right hand thumb rule right hand thumb rule so i take here directly it's not a lens law it is not a fleming's left hand rule fleming's left hand rule gives the direction of magnetic force which is acting on a current carrying conductor so now here maxwell's law we are not using so that is what we are having right hand thumb rule. right hand thumb rule so right hand palm rule also that is what direction of magnetic field uh, passing through okay. right hand thumb rule so here a proton is moving along z axis z axis in a magnetic field the magnetic field is along x axis the proton will experience a force along so here proton let's see so this is what we are having x axis and this what we are having i'll consider y axis and this is z axis these are three mutually perpendicular to each other so as we know the current current magnetic field magnetic force are mutually perpendicular to each other according to fleming's left hand rule as we know very well so let's see here let's see here at the what they have given the proton is moving along z axis so along this it's moving so this is z axis okay and uh, the magnetic field is along x axis this is a magnetic field this is magnetic field okay so here you have to observe this you have to observe if this is the current direction this is the magnetic field and this will be the magnetic force so as we know the current is the direction direction of current is what we are having conventional direction so in which direction the protons or positive charges are moving so or in the direction of opposite to the flow of electrons yes so the current is in the direction of along what yes of course that current will be along z axis so take it along z axis is the current then the force will be along y axis so this is a magnetic force so magnetic force is always perpendicular to the plane of plane of current and magnetic field so remember magnetic force is always perpendicular to the plane of current and magnetic field okay so here to this plane it is perpendicular okay to this it plane the force will be perpendicular let's take next next question a strong magnetic field is applied on a stationary electron then stationary electron then so here remember remember 
I'll write here the force experienced on a charged particle is Q V B sin theta. This is a magnetic force on a charged particle. The charged particle experiences a force. How much that is Q V B sin theta. V is a velocity. V is what velocity. Q is what charge. B is what magnetic field. In a magnetic field, we have kept a charge at rest. Charge is a stationary. Then charge is stationary. Velocity is what zero. If velocity is zero, then zero into anything is what zero. The magnetic force on it zero. If magnetic force is acting on it is zero, then it will be remain at rest. Remember always. The current experience, the current carrying conductor experience a force, magnetic force, because the current carrying conductor produces the magnetic field around it, the external magnetic field, and this magnetic field that experiences the force of attraction and force of repulsion then produces a magnetic field. So here, if it is a stationary electron is at station, uh, stationary, sorry, uh, at rest, then there is uh, no current. There is no current. Charges at rest. There is no current. Then the motion of charges will produce a current, as we know. So electron, when it is at rest in a magnetic field, the magnetic force on it will be zero. So it will be remains rest. That is what the electron remain. Uh, the electron moves in a direction of the field. No, the electron uh, move in opposite direction of. Uh, uh, what is the opposite direction? No, the electron remains uh, stationary. Take the third option is the correct option. Uh, the electron remains stationary. So next next question. A ray of light incident on a plane mirror at an angle 30, the deviation produced in the ray is. See here, this is a plane, this is a plane mirror. This is a plane mirror. So this is what we are having normal. So this is what we are having incident ray. The angle of incidence they have given, this is a 30 degree. Then as we know, angle, angle of reflection will be also 30 degree according to loss of reflection. This is a plane mirror. The angle incidence is 30 degree. So there, if the mirror is not there, means the light would have passed like this, along this direction, right? So now, instead of coming light ray, this, it has deviated through this angle. This is angle of deviation. So this angle is 180. Yes or no? 180. In this 180, how much angle is gone? 30 plus 30, 60. 180 minus 60. Then this will be equal to what? Angle of deviation, angle of deviation is equal to 180 minus 2i. Or you can write angle of deviation is equal to 180 minus angle of incidence plus angle of reflection. But as we know, according to loss of reflection, angle of incidence plus angle of, uh, sorry, angle of incidence and angle of reflection will be remain same. So I am directly writing that is 180, 180 minus 2i or 180 minus 2r. You can take deviation. So here 120 will be the answer. Okay, 120 will be the answer. So let's see next question. So a man having a height of six meter, he observes an image of two meter height erect. Erect. Then the mirror used. So you remember the erect image formed. That is what virtual image. So virtual image is always diminished in the case of convex mirror. But virtual image will be magnified in the case of concave mirror. But you have to observe height of the man is 6 meter. Height of the man is 6 meter. But height of the image, height of the image is what? 2 meter. It is, it is diminished, right? If it is diminished, if it is diminished, then which mirror it is? As I say, that is virtual and virtual image always formed by what? Convex mirror, convex mirror and image will be diminished. The concave mirror also forms a virtual image in the condition of when the object is placed between pole and focus, but virtual image that is a magnified image will get in the case of concave mirror. So here the convex mirror. In the case of plane mirror, plane mirror, plane mirror also they have given. Plane mirror also forms always virtual image, but it will be same size, same size. So, but size is different here. Size is diminished. So, because of that, convex is the correct answer. So, let's see the next question. The relationship between the linear magnification u, uh, linear magnification m of object distance u and the focal length of f is. So, here, if I take, uh, let us take the focal length 1 by f is equal to 1 by v plus 1 by u. Okay, this is what we are having. 
if suppose if i multiply this with u both side u by f is equal to 1 by v 1 by v plus 1 by u by sorry u by v u by u u by u get cancelled are you getting okay so now if i take here u by f is equal to u by v plus 1 yes or no then if i take this side then it will be what will get here u by f minus 1 that equal to u by v so if i this u minus f divided by f so that equal to u divided by v so this we can write here v divided by u is equal to f divided by f minus sorry f minus, u minus f u, u minus f just write down u minus f u minus f but as we know magnification is relation linear relation between magnification object distance and focal length object distance is there so that we have taken because of that object if they have given suppose image distance then you have to multiply here image distance this is about mirror formula what was f is equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v as you already learned so what we are having linear magnification minus v divided by u but we are having here v by u is already f divided by u minus f so can i write here that minus if it is there then f divided by f minus u yes so this is a linear magnification of focal length and object distance that they have given here a uh, second option that is second option is m equal to f divided by f minus u so yeah the fourth option f plus u is there this won't be option that will be f plus again u divided by u f that is a wrong option and this also wrong option the correct option is second that is the relationship between object distance and focal length if they ask image distance then you have to multiply image distance v okay so next question is a virtual image larger than the object can be obtained as i said so virtual image in the case of convex is always diminished always diminished diminished in the case of which case convex virtual image formed by convex and this always diminished the virtual image formed by concave mirror also but the object should be between between f and p between f and p between pole and focus and that time you have to observe and that time observe so these rays these rays are appears to coming from this point this is what virtual image and this is magnified image so in the case of concave mirror we used to get a magnified virtual image magnified virtual image the next question radius of curvature of concave mirror is 40 centimeter 40 centimeter they have given radius of curvature 40 centimeter and size of the image is or twice as that of object size of the image is twice as that of the object then the object distance is object distance is object distance they are asking so here magnification is equal to minus v by u yes or no so that is equal to height of the image to the height of the object they have mentioned here the size of the image twice uh, twice that of that of object twice that of object so 2 h naught by h naught h naught h naught get cancelled then magnification how much we are having 2 magnification is 2 that equal to minus v by u so u is equal to what v by 2 or v is equal to what minus 2 u v is equal to minus 2 u then object distance are asking just write down 1 by f is equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v but they have given here radius of curvature is 40 centimeter radius of curvature focal length will be half of radius of curvature or radius of curvature will be twice of focal length for uh, spherical mirrors remember radius of curvature will be twice of focal length then 40 means focal length must be 20 centimeter write down 1 by 20 which mirror it is concave mirror focal length will be negative so that equal to that equal to we'll get minus 1 by u and um, minus 1 by v minus of plus is there minus of minus so minus is there 1 by 2 u right it is as it is so here if i take minus 2 minus 1 divided by 2 u 
so minus 1 by 20 so that is equal to minus 3 so minus 3 so you'll get here that is a 2u is equal to 3 minus 3 into 20 minus 3 into 20 how much will get better so that is a 60 so 60 object distance will be 60 by 2 minus 30 that is a object distance will get 30 30 centimeters the object distance okay so next the next question the focal length of convex mirror is 20 centimeter its radius of curvature will be so as i take here radius of curvature is uh, for a spherical mirrors what we are having two times of focal length focal length radius of curvature focal length 20 centimeter radius of curvature 2 into 20 will be 40 40 centimeter it will be the answer that is the fourth option okay the next question convergence of the concave mirror can be decreased by dipping in dipping in converging converging the power of convergence power of convergence is something power is equal to reciprocal of what focal length so let's see here let's see here the power what we are having power of this uh, converging power that is will be decreased by that mirror if we have kept in which medium remember the focal length of mirror will be remain same in any medium you can take because focal length of mirror does not depend on refractive index so refractive index will depend agala ad koskara ad will remain same that is 1 by f is equal to what we are having 1 by u plus 1 by v that is enough it does not depend on medium so remember none of this it does not take oil water or both remember the focal length will be remain same for concave mirror or concavex mirror so let's take next question a cylindrical bar a magnet is kept along the axis of circular coil the magnet is rotated about its axis then what happens so this is the coil button if this is a coil there is a cylindrical magnet cylindrical magnet on the axis they have kept and if this rotated like this if the in the coil if the magnet is rotated like this if it is rotated like this on the axis does the magnetic field changes through this coil as well as we know magnet field changes which is linked with the coil then only the induced current will takes place there is no change in magnetic field then there is no induced current takes place that what we are having the no current will be induced in the coil okay this is the option so uh, try to solve the number of questions which is uh, if you solved uh, from your textbooks and the reference books use it so it will be helpful to your examination thank you dear students let's see you very soon for live classes